The recent winter blast is sending gas prices up. Lithium ion batteries are now available in retail stores. One campground chain has more than double the advanced reservations this year than they did at the same time in 2020. And there's a new trailer that weighs only 300 pounds. You won't believe what it's made out of. I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and here we talk about the latest in RV and camping news that you, the consumer, need to know. This video is sponsored by Togo RV Plus. If you're looking for app-based navigation for your RV routes, routes that'll keep you safe from low overpasses and winding roads, Togo RV Plus is for you. The free version of the Togo RV app already includes great things like checklists and service reminders that are based off of your specific RV. But Togo RV Plus, which is just $39 a year, includes the RV GPS. It includes Road Trippers Plus, which is our favorite road trip planning software. You'll get campground discounts up to 15%. You'll get unlimited checklists from RV experts. You'll get vehicle recall alerts for your RV, how-to guides, videos, and tips all included for just $39 a year. But Togo is offering $10 off for you with the code RVMILES10X, which I'll put down in the description, a link to sign up for $10 off Togo RV Plus with the code RVMILES10X. Campgrounds in Texas and other states that were hammered by the recent blast of cold are now entering the recovery phase. Much of Texas is still under boil orders after 100 hours straight below freezing for virtually the entire state. Many campgrounds are having to deal with repairing dozens of water lines and faucets while the plumbing aisles in the home improvement stores are ransacked. It's going to take some time to fully recover, and those heading into Texas should be aware that in addition to challenges with water availability, grocery stores are depleted and many gas stations are out of fuel in certain areas. The body blow dealt to Texas will also have repercussions across the country. The forced shutdown of 10 refineries in the Lone Star State, along with other Gulf Coast and Midwestern refineries, cut about 40% of U.S. crude production, sending fuel prices on the rise. According to AAA, two-thirds of state averages spiked by double digits, driving the national average up by 13 cents to $2.63. That's the most expensive national average since October of 2019. Gas prices are likely to be volatile until crude production is back to normal levels, and AAA says motorists can expect these more expensive prices to stick around, but large spikes are likely to subside. Propane 2 is coming up in price again and limited in availability. Propane prices have climbed more than 70% since last November. Farmers use propane to dry crops, and a very wet fall had them blowing through lots of it. Patio heating from outdoor dining at restaurants due to COVID and an uptick in exports to Asia have also played a major hand in propane prices. The deep freeze put a run on propane in Texas as people tried to use propane heaters to warm their homes without electricity. The nation's largest RV dealership chain is flexing its muscles to rapidly gobble up more independent dealerships. Right now, Camping World is focusing on the Northeast with a half dozen acquisitions in Maine, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, and New York just this month. The company's goal is to plant a Camping World flag in all of the lower 48 states in order to provide a truly nationwide and difficult to compete with network of locations. And they say they're building a web-centric process to sell both new and used RVs completely online. The company currently has operating RV dealerships, agreements to acquire existing RV dealerships, or is under new construction in all 48 states. Camping World competitor Lazy Days RV has announced two Airstream-only dealerships, one in Knoxville, Tennessee, and one in Ramsey, Minnesota, dedicated to the iconic Silver Bullet trailers, along with their Atlas and Interstate Class B touring coaches. Lazy Days currently operates 11 dealerships in six states and recently announced its intent to add a second dealership location in Minnesota and acquire two more. Automotive dealers are low on inventory, but it hasn't hurt them too much. According to Automotive News, in 2005, General Motors dealerships had nearly 1.2 million vehicles on their lots. This winter, they're down to about one third of that level with many pickups and SUVs sold shortly after their arrival, or even while they're still on the truck. 
The pandemic has exacerbated the reduction, but it's a long-term trend that we could see sticking around. Low inventory has ended long-fought pricing battles between the big automakers, and they're learning that it's actually increasing profits. Could this be a trend we'll see in the RV industry as well? Well, time will tell, but I think a big swing towards customer ordered units is going to be here for a while, and it might actually improve manufacturer offerings. Until recently, the vast majority of RVs were spec'd and purchased by dealers based on their conception of what will sell the best and based on the amount of profit they could turn. So instead of features many of us RVers really want for our specific needs, units often attempt to please every buyer in a mediocre way. The Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company is purchasing the Cooper Tire and Rubber Company, consolidating two of America's biggest tire brands. Goodyear is the world's largest tire manufacturer, and Cooper is the fifth. Both have plants around the world, with Goodyear operating nine facilities in the U.S. and Cooper running four. Lithium-ion batteries are all the rage in RV electrical systems lately, and for many good reasons. They last for years, they're lightweight, they charge quickly, and they can be fully depleted with no damage. But besides their hard-to-swallow prices, one of the biggest things holding lithium-ion batteries back has been a lack of availability in stores. That may change as rely-on batteries are set to be sold in Batteries Plus stores. Batteries Plus will offer customers Reliance most popular lithium products, including 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt batteries. A lot of RV owners are concerned about using the right products to clean their RVs, right? Specialty materials like gel coated fiberglass and EDPM roofs. Well, trusted RV sealant manufacturer Dicor has a solution. The company is bringing a full line of RV safe cleaning products to the market including a concentrated exterior wash, a black streak remover, a bug and tar remover that dissolves dried on insects and other hard to clean residues, an awning cleaner that removes bird droppings, tree sap, and leaf stains, a mold and mildew remover for RV roof membranes and bathrooms, and a special three meter telescopic pole with three available brush heads that connects to a hose for fast and easy cleaning and rinsing. In campground news, Jellystone, the chain of 70 family-friendly camp resorts, says that advanced reservations for 2021 are up 150% over 2020. The last three months of the year saw 52% increase in campers over the previous year. The average number of nights booked in 2021 has increased to four from two, and there's been a nearly 300% increase in guests booking multiple trips. Campground availability is sure to be a problem this year, but help is on the way. Lots of campgrounds are being built. Our friends at the Florida and Alabama Association of RV Parks and Campgrounds point to several under construction right now, especially in Alabama, where the Alabama Farmers Agriculture Foundation is building a 400-site RV park as part of the Alabama Farm Center. There's also the Time Away RV Resort in Lincoln, a 100-site park set to open in June within walking distance of the Talladega Speedway. It's the first African-American-owned campground in the state. Finally, as the world begins to shift towards electric vehicles, Inventors and manufacturers are busy dreaming up what kind of trailers could be towed by them. Lightweight and streamlined is key as battery capacity is largely dependent on the weight and profile of the vehicle they're powering. Small teardrop trailers are ideal, but many are still a bit too heavy for most electric vehicles. New Mexico-based Earth Traveler may have a solution, a teardrop trailer that weighs less than 300 pounds. It's the lightest RV available on the market. The secret? It's made out of chicken feathers. The feathers are reinforced with fiberglass and resin, resulting in an ultra-lightweight, cost-effective, insulative, and weatherproof structure, nearly as strong as carbon fiber. That's it for this episode of RV and Camping News. If you got something out of this video, please click the like button and make sure to subscribe if you want more like it. And click that little notification bell if you want to get notified each time we put a new video out. Let's read some comments from the last one. Fuel prices are rising and that could have a dramatic effect on RV travel. Stand by. I don't think it will. The average RV travels about 3,000 miles a year. And, you know, there's a lot of politics going around about fuel prices and what fuel prices may be in the future, but 
I don't think it's going to affect RV sales. Don't call them campsites, they're RV parking lots. All they care about is as many as possible, a few feet apart, and the fun in RV is coming to an end. I'm good. I truly love this channel, one of my favorites. Thanks so much, Rita. I didn't buy a truck camper for comfort. I bought it so I could go places that RVs can't go. Yahoo. I hate to tell you, and I hate to tell all you other truck campers, truck campers are RVs too. I made my reservations for the summer in January and campsites were nearly booked up by then. We're seeing a lot of that, especially weekends are hard to get already for this summer. Hey, I like the new haircut. Hey, I did it myself. <laughs> I actually haven't had a professional haircut in a year and a half now, I think. Calling RVs going camping is a riot. Why do you watch a video on a channel called RV Miles then? I don't care what you call it. Really, like the number of people that want to say RVing is not camping. I really, do you think any of us care what you call it or what you think we should call it? It's camping. Being in a cabin is camping. Anywhere away from your home, moving around, setting up camp is camping. With all the extra travelers, what's going to happen to your wait time for warranty work? The demand for parts will go to the new RV first. Absolutely. And you know, they say one of the fast, one of the, I think the third fastest growing job in this country is RV repair technicians. Look, I can't stress this enough. If you have a minor repair issue, it is so not worth it to take it back to your dealership most of the time even if it's going to be under warranty it's it's just worth it to pay a mobile repair tech 150 dollars to come fix it it just is dispersed camping for the win absolutely but guess what you're going to see a lot more people this year at those dispersed camping sites as well a lot of the people that were newbies last year are going to be figuring that stuff out this year and a lot of people that liked to stay in campgrounds before and are having a hard time getting them are going to be doing a lot more boondocking and dispersed camping for sure this year. One of the best channels for RVers filled with great information. We have three soon going to be four trips planned this year already, but I'm concerned about the year after. I think I should start booking them now, but my wife don't think so. You're, <laughs> you're, I, I don't normally like to say your wife is wrong, um, but your wife is wrong. And my wife would agree. Start booking as soon as you can. You can always change dates, uh, but it's worth it to book campsites right now. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.